Yo, what's going on guys? It's Shock with DG, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing an operator tier list. So I'm going to be going through ranking each of these operators. So for my own personal ranks, I've got the insane tier, the meta tier, map specific, situational, and useless tiers. So basically, I'm going to go through and I'm going to rank each of these individual operators. So to start us off, we're going to start with Maverick here. So Maverick, in my opinion, is going to go in the insane tier simply because he's a hard breacher with absolutely no counters. Next off, we're going to go with Thatcher. So Thatcher recently has had some uh, nerfs to him with the fact that he can't uh, destroy gadgets anymore. He only disables them. Um, I do believe he's still in the meta, so we're going to keep him in meta. Time for Doc. Uh, Doc, I believe, is actually still a really good operator. I don't think that Rook is better simply because Doc lost his ACOG. So Doc's actually going to go in the Situational tab. I should say that the Situational tab here does not mean that the operator is bad. So if you see me put any of these operators in Situational, it does not mean that they are a bad operator. It simply means that I think that they are very good, but only in certain situations. So continuing on, we've got Ying. So Ying is another one of those operators that had seen some buffs, some nerfs, and uh, things like that. She's actually really powerful on certain maps and certain takes. So for that, she's going to go in map specific. Next off, we've got Blackbeard. Blackbeard is another one of those operators that is very good, but only situational. So he's going to go in that tab. Alibi is actually really good. Um, but again, she's just one of those operators where it's like, if you're on like consulate, maybe you want to bring an alibi for a roam upstairs or something like that. But uh, you're not going to bring alibi every single round. But she is good for roaming. You've got the impact grenades. You've got the secondary shotgun, a pretty good primary, her alibis. Um, so for that reason, she's going to go in situational. Next up, we've got Dokubi, another one of those situational operators. Um, decent weapons. Uh, her call is actually pretty good still. But uh, the nerfs that she's seen, she's just going to be in situational. Next up is Capitao. So Capitao is one of those operators that you're going to want to bring on specific maps. So on very specific maps, uh, for example, like Coastline, you've seen someone like Meepy uh, when he used to be in Pro League on Team Secret uh, utilize Capitao really well on that map specifically. There's, uh, of course, other maps where he's very good on, but he's one of those operators that you're not going to pick like every single map. So for that reason, he's in map specific. Mira is another operator that we're going to put in the insane tier, um, mainly because Mira is just so ridiculously like overpowered that she's just always banned like you rarely see a mirror in play because of how useful she is so she's gonna go ahead and be in the insane tier next up we're gonna pick um mute here so mute is 100 percent in the meta right now you've heard of the mute mozzie thing uh not so prevalent anymore but certainly still mute is very good c4 for plant denial or just free kills shotguns for rotates the great smg 11 as you guys know i love that weapon it's so good um, his jammers are, of course, awesome for drone denial, wall denial, uh, things such as that. So he's going to stay in the meta tab. As for Clash, she's going to be one of those situational operators once again. Very good in certain situations on certain holds um, if you have a certain strat you want to do. But uh, overall, not one of those operators that you're going to be taking like every round. Um, next up, Maestro. So Maestro is, again, one of those operators that is just really, really powerful, such as Mira and Maverick. So we're going to put him in the Insane tab. I think it's pretty straightforward why Maestro is so powerful with his Alda. That thing is literally ridiculous. Um, next up, Frost. Frost is actually going to go in Situational. Um, I believe Frost is really good, especially in, like, higher elo. Uh, she could be pretty useful. Like, uh, in higher elo, I think there's, like, statistics that say that Frost is, like, best used there because lower-ranked lower, lower ranked players tend to check for it more, but higher-ranking higher ranking players just really don't check for it. So she's actually really good for, like, uh, like a pick that you just bring out, like, mid-game or something randomly. Next up, Buck. Um, so Buck recently lost his grenades, and, like, that's brought up a debate on if he's still, like, better than sledge if he's you know still needs to be picked like every single round um i do think that buck is really powerful still i do think he's very close uh in comparison to sledge but i think he's gonna be map specific now uh, mainly because he's lost his grenades which means he can no longer uh destroy malusi's gadget maestro cams any castle barricades with those grenades and he also just lost fragging power overall he's gonna miss out on a lot of free kills losing those grenades so uh, for that reason, I think that he's going to actually go to map specific on certain maps, which is like border. You want to go below and use buck. That's great. You're not really going to want sledge for border as often as you would want buck. So I think 
Buck is certainly better than Sledge in some instances, but only on specific maps, making him map specific. Next up, we've got Glaz. I mean, he's not completely useless, I guess, but uh, honestly, like if, if you're like in high elo or this is a pro league game or a competitive game, you're really not going to say, hey, let's bring Glaz. You know, there's a, a, a million different operators you'd rather bring than Glaz. Um, next up, we've got Montaigne. Montaigne's another one of those like um, map specific or situational operators. It, it really depends. Like he could be either or, but we'll put him in situational. Um, because even on some maps, you're not going to 100% want to bring Montaigne. So he'll go uh, situational for that. Uh, Nomad. Nomad is, if you guys have watched my videos, you know she's one of my favorite operators. She's actually so good watching your flank. Definitely a great operator to pick and ranked. Um, I believe she's in the meta right now. Her gadget is just so powerful. So we're going to put her there. Next up, we have actually got Valkyrie. So Valkyrie is, of course, like great for Intel. Um, on some maps, though, you're not going to want to bring her just because, like, it's not really a Valkyrie map. There's there's definitely maps that are, like, Valkyrie maps, such as, like, maybe Coastline. Um, I, I The first one that comes to mind, though, is definitely Consulate. Consulate's a big Valkyrie map. Uh, usually, you'll either see, like, a Nomad or a Valk Band, something like that. So, we're going to put her in map-specific. Definitely not a bad operator, but uh, more map-specific, in my opinion. Next up, we've got Twitch. So... Especially with Zero coming out, I think that Twitch is going to be more situational, mainly because Zero can do much of what Twitch can, but I think a little bit more efficiently, even though he doesn't have as many zaps as she could potentially have. Um, I do think that Zero can sort of do what she does, but a little bit better. And also he has his frag grenades, which is, of course, awesome. So personally, I think Twitch is now a situational operator. You're not going to want to break as often as like, say, Zero or something. Um, so we're going to put her there. Next up is Gridlock, another situational operator. She's very good on certain maps. I love to bring her on maps with a lot of staircases, so such as Cafe, a bunch of staircases. It's great to throw those Gridlocks on the stairs. Um, she's definitely useful on, on like a bunch of different takes if you want smoke grenades and also flank watch. Maybe take her instead of Nomad um, if you need a shotgun, you know what I mean? So definitely she has her place, but I think Nomad is an overall better flank watching operator. So for that reason, we're going to put Gridlock in the situational tab. So next up, of course, we have Pulse, and I really think that Pulse is going to end up being a map-specific operator. He's really good on certain maps. Um, you know, again, Coastline comes, or not Coastline, sorry. Well, actually, yeah, Coastline comes to mind. Um, if you're playing like Hookah and they're doing an Aqua take, you go below, uh, throw C4 for the plant denial. I think that Pulse is a really good operator for things such as that, but sort of like Valkyrie, you're not always going to want a Pulse. It's kind of like specific to certain maps. Next up is Lion. Um, Lion is another one of those operators that used to be like incredibly powerful and now just really isn't. The nerfs he's seen, he's definitely good, I'd say, but not not as good as he was and definitely not good enough to be picked every round in certain situations if you're trying to do a rush strat or something very specific where you want the uh, defenders to stay still um, or you want to cut off positions line could be pretty good for that but i'd say in the current meta he's just not as good as he was before so <laughs> next up we've got the chanka currently the chanka has not seen his buff of course so he's going to go in the useless tab unfortunately the chanka is just really not good um maybe once we see his uh his buff he'll be in, like the insane tier or something but for now he's in the useless tab so next up of course we've got sophia sophia is going to go in the meta tab she's definitely very 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 good um like one of those operators you'd take maybe with ash or something like that she's just so good her stuns her impact grenades uh, amazing weapons so yeah uh, next up is Cade. Cade is another meta operator. He's so good right now, denying those hatches. You've seen a lot in Pro League that they have these specific Cade spots where you can throw them. They'll deny uh, the panels on the wall, but you have to do like something super specific to destroy the Cades. It's like really annoying to destroy them. Um, so C Cade is actually so good right now. Next up is Thermite. Thermite's another meta operator. Of course, Thermite, the OG, like hard breacher always been in the game the best the best um i don't know what else there is to say about thermite he's just awesome uh, another hard breacher habana definitely gonna go in the meta tab again just being able to open like three hatches on maps such as clubhouse that's crazy if you get all three hatches if like a kate isn't in play that's actually so insane um so next up is rook so rook is really good in certain situations so he's gonna go in the situational tab 
um, in certain instances where like you would, you're deciding, uh, do we pick Doc? Do we pick Rook? It really comes down to the setup you want to do. And oftentimes it, it's like, do you want like a bulletproof camera or barbed wire with Doc? Or do you want impact grenades with Rook? So oftentimes like maybe your setup doesn't call for a smoke and you don't have an extra shotgun to make rotates. You'll bring a Rook instead of that Doc and uh, he can help out make those rotate holes. Next up is Ash. Again, I think Ash is really in the meta right now. The three flash grenades to burn those Wamai discs and the uh, Jaeger ADSs, I think is just really powerful. Again, her, her, her gun is crazy, just like Sophia. Um, I really do feel like she's in the meta still. Next up is Bandit, another awesome uh, wall denial operator such as Mute. Again, he's also in the meta. He's just so powerful. Um, maps such as Clubhouse, the Bandit tricking and things such as that. He's just so good for what he does. Next up is Ella. Ella is a personal favorite of mine. I love Ella. You guys will know that if you watch my videos. Um, I think Ella's a situational operator simply because she's really, really good, but only if you're playing like close quarters for the most part. Um, even with the recent buffs to her weapon, I do believe that she's still mainly good close range, playing off her Ella mines. Uh, and using her like gun up close, I think is is where she shines the most. But no, you're not always gonna have the option to do that. So she's gonna go in the situational tab. Next up is Sledge. Sledge, that meta operator, he's so so good. Destroying castle barricades on maps such as Clubhouse if they're going gym. Take out all those castles, any hatches, anything like that. Sledge is just so good. The SMG11, the L85 nades, so good. Overall, just awesome operator. Next up is Echo. Echo is definitely going to go in the insane tab. He's, I believe he's got impacts now. The two invisible yokai drones, that's ridiculous. Echo is just so, so good. Um, it's often why you see either of these operators banned, Echo or Maestro. Usually one of them gets put up. It's like, it's like Echo, Maestro, or Mira. Like one of these three, or at least two of these three, are like always banned. Um, so these three are definitely going in the insane tab. Next up is Castle. So Castle is going to fall under map specific. Uh, Castle is great on certain maps, again, such as Clubhouse. If you're going to play the gym bomb site, I believe he's awesome for that bomb site. Other maps, he's great. Consulate, sometimes you want to bring a Castle uh, if you're going top floor. There's just so many. Castle can be used on so many maps, but uh, there's certain maps where you're just not going to bring a Castle. You just really don't need Castle at all. So we're going to put him in map specific. Next up is actually Vigil another map specific operator he's so good at roaming i mean of course his gadget is literally to deny drones from seeing him the impact grenades the secondary smgs the imp um his primary which is so good his gadget of course again which denies him from being seen from drones awesome overall roaming operator but you're not always going to want vigil he's not gonna you there's there's other roaming operators that you're gonna want to take over vigil but on bigger maps such as maybe bank He's like, he really shines because it's so hard to find Vigil on bank. You know what I mean? Next up is Smoke. Smoke, 100% in the insane tab. Smoke is just insane. The ability to deny plant with his three canisters, smoke canisters, the shotgun, the SMG-11, such as what Mute has. Um, the shield, shields are so good now. Shields are ridiculously good with those like bulletproof uh, slits that they have in them. Crazy good, crazy good. Next up is Mozzie. So uh, as you guys all know, Mozzie lost his super shorty. Um, I do believe he is still in the meta though. Um, you do see Mozzie ran quite a bit still. The mute Mozzie combo can still be very powerful. Uh, Mozzie did lose his shotgun, but if you are running mute Mozzie, you do have the mute shotgun to make up for that. Um, it could be a little more rough. Mute setup could take a little bit longer, but you still do have the shotgun on mute. So it's not necessarily like a, a deal breaker. I do believe that the mute Mozzie thing could still work, and I believe he's still in the meta. Next up, we got Fuse. So uh, in my last tier list, I believe I put Fuse in the useless tab, but I'm actually going to move him to situational. I think that Fuse can be very good for utility clearing. So we're in a current meta that the defenders have a ridiculous amount of utility. And the attackers need to clear all of that, such as the shields, like Goyo shields, um, even smoke shields, uh, Maestro camps, all of that. And usually it's all protected by Wamai's discs and AD, uh, Jaeger's ADSs. So if you could clear all of those with Fuse's cluster charges from like above, for example, that could be huge. And you could also destroy shields or whatnot with it. So I think Fuse could be really good, but only in certain situations. You have to like f fit him into your lineup and that's not always possible. 
Next up is Blitz. So currently, I think Blitz is going to be pretty useless, especially compared to an operator like Montaigne. Um, I don't know. Blitz used to be like really, really good, but I honestly, I feel like with the, like the ADS time, how long it takes to ADS and all that, I just don't feel as if he's as good as he was. And I feel like Montaigne is going to be the play over Blitz like most of the time. Um, so next up is Finca. Again, I'm going to throw her in the useless tab. I just really feel as if she doesn't bring much to the team. Um, if you're playing at like a higher level, there's practically no recoil on any gun. It really doesn't matter what you're using. And that's like one of the main things Finca does is all of a sudden you're trying to control your recoil and then somebody Finca's and you're now aiming at the ground because there's zero recoil all of a sudden. Um, I really feel like she can get you killed a lot of the time because of that. And I, I just don't feel as if she brings enough to the table to warrant her being brought over like any of these other operators. So for that, she's going to be useless. Next up, we've got Jaeger. So Jaeger, 100% in the meta tab. As I was just stating uh, when I was talking about Fuse, Jaeger is so important right now in the utility meta. Being able to stop the uh, Sophia, the Ash, or, or the Nades on Sledge, or whatever it may be, from destroying your Goyo shields, or your Smoke shield, or anything like that, is so important. So next up is Cav. Cav is going to be another useless operator, in my opinion. Um, and this tier list, I should state that I'm mainly talking about like a higher level of play. So like Diamond, a Champion, Elo, and then also like competitive plays, such as like Challenger League, Pro League. Um, so that's mainly kind of where I'm coming from when I'm talking about these operators. Um, so with that being said, at that level of play, I really don't believe that Kavera is that good. Um, I know we've seen like G2 bring her in Pro League at land before and like it's actually it's actually worked really well. Um, but I feel like that's like a one off thing and it just doesn't it's not going to happen very often. And I don't believe that she's worth uh, taking when you have all of these other operators on defense that are so good right now within the utility meta. So next up is Legion. Legion, 1 million percent still in the meta. Um, recently, he got the addition of the 1.5x, which is just ridiculous. That gun with the 1.5x is so, so good. Um, and of course, his gadget is obviously pretty good still. I know a lot of people think that he's like completely useless because of what he did, uh, what Ubisoft did to his gadget. But personally, I believe he's actually still really good. Um, and he also has impact grenades, which is great. Because if you're not running smoke shotgun or mute shotgun or, or whatever, you may need to rely on those impact grenades to make rotate holes. Or even if you're on a map like Clubhouse, you can impact trick the hatch and kitchen. Um, so I do think that Legion is still in the meta. So with this utility meta, um, it's, I mean, obviously IQ meta, definitely 100%. I mean, IQ on certain maps, you're going to be able to go below the site, shoot those, well, my discs, shoot those ADSs, shoot the meat jammers, the bandits, whatever it may be. And the G8, I mean, they nerfed the G8 on IQ by taking the ACOG away, but I use the hollow on it just fine. Uh, so I think paired with the G8, <laughs> IQ is definitely in the meta right now. I mean, you saw pro players bring IQ uh, when Echo was banned just for the G8. Like, the G8 alone puts her in the meta, I think. Um, next up is Capkin. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw Capkin in the situational time. I don't think he's useless, um, and I don't think he's really map-specific. I think he's going to be situational. You can kind of bring Capkin out on most maps and catch the attackers off guard. Um, bring it out, like, later in into the game like round two, round three, so that they, that they don't expect it. Um, and maybe maybe you'll get a free kill. Maybe you'll light somebody up with it. You've also got your C4. I think he's a good, like, random pick uh, mid-game. So next up is Jackal. So Jackal, Jackal, Jackal. All of his nerfs. He used to be, like, he used to be in the insane tier. He used to be crazy. He was banned every single round. Um, very, very good operator. I honestly think that he's going to fall under like map specific now or even situational. It's really hard to tell like what you want to put him in, but I'm going to put him under map specific. I think he's really good on bigger maps such as maybe consulate, uh, bank, uh, maps such as that where you have to roam clear the whole map usually and you have so much like ground to cover. And if you have like a vigil in play, it can be really, really difficult to track down where he is. So having a jackal can be really helpful with that. Next up is Warden. So, Warden, um, he can be good on some maps, I think. So, we'll throw him in map specific. I feel like, again, maps like Bank, he can shine where you're holding, like, say, blue stairs uh, in the server room. And you've got your shotgun or whatever. You can put on your uh, gadget and you won't get flashed when they go to push your staircase. Um, 
I feel like he's good there and like maybe in other situations on other maps where you're kind of put in a position like that. But um, other than that, I don't believe that he's like that good compared to like the meta and insane operators. So we're going to throw him in uh, map specific. Next up is Nock. So Nock, um, we're going to throw her in situational. I think that she's good um, on maps, uh, again, such as bank, maybe if you want to push the garage later in the round, um, and you want to avoid those maestro cams or echo drones, whatever it may be, the bulletproof cam, you can throw knock in there and, uh, kind of see if that works. I think, I think rogue did it once in pro league and it actually worked out like a long time ago. Um, so like certain situations, not going to be good, but what I want to take knock over like Zofia usually probably not. So we're going to throw her in situational. Well, my 100% in the meta right now. Again, I've been talking about it the whole list. Well, my and Jaeger, the utility meta, stopping the grenades and Zofia charges, Ash charges, uh, stuff like that from destroying the shields and all that, I think is is very, very powerful. And, you know, the meta is, of course, utility, utility based. And I feel like well, my uh, is able to stop a lot of the attacking utility, which makes him very powerful. So, Amaru... Um, I'm going to throw her in useless. I said earlier that the GA alone brings IQ up to meta, but I think that's only mainly because her gadget is also so good that put like paired together, you could easily bring her to meta. But honestly, with like Amaru, you, I mean, maybe in certain situations you'd want to use her, but for the most part, I feel like her gadget is overall sort of useless and higher ranks. Uh, it's so loud. Uh, I know they buffed it a little bit recently, but I just really don't feel as if it's that powerful, um, even with the G8 and the SMG11. So she's going to stay useless. She may be able to come to the situational, um, but we're going to leave her in useless. So next up, Kali. Definitely in the meta right now. Oftentimes, you're going to see a Thatcher ban in Pro League. Uh, so that that's going to make it really difficult to get things off the wall. You might see a Maverick and Thatcher ban. You might see either or banned. And it's just going to make your life a little bit more difficult while trying to get uh, like bandits off the wall or mutes or cades. So I think Kali is definitely in the meta right now. So next up is Goyo. Goyo is definitely going to be a map-specific operator for me. He was like towards the insane tier um, when his TCSG was like ridiculously overpowered. He had like four shields, I think it was, his C4. He was crazy. Um, I think he's fallen from that now with the nerfs. I think Ubisoft has nerfed him pretty well. He's in a better spot, and I think map specific suits him well. So next up is uh, Oryx. I think Oryx is also situational, or not situational, map specific, sorry. Um, maps such as Cafe, where you've got the bars on the top floor, like Cocktail Bar. I think it's really useful to actually, like, use your gadget to dash and destroy all the bars so that your, like, Sledge or, or your Smoke or Mute player doesn't have to sit there, like, shotgunning out all the bars for line of sights for, like, the default plant spots. Instead, it takes, like, orcs, like, 10 seconds to destroy all the bars. Um, so, if, like, specific maps where you need to do things such as that, I think that orcs is actually really good for that. Next up is Iana. So Iana is going to be a situational operator, I believe. Um, her gadget's really, really good, actually. Uh, the ability to have like so much intel. She's basically like an infinite amount of drones, in a sense, with her gadget. Um, her gun, the ARX, is, is actually pretty good. Um, her nades, like again, those are good. But I don't feel as if you're going to want to bring Iana in the current meta uh, as much as a lot of the other attackers. So right now, she's just a situational operator. Next up, we have Ace. Ace, I'm definitely going to put in the insane tier. He's so, so good. Um, the ability to basically make like a full Habana, like, like a full three pellet Habana hole uh, in a wall like three different times is actually crazy. Uh, like maps such as Clubhouse, like wow, you can you can open up so much. You can open up the single construction wall. You can open up the actual construction wall to site and the site wall, like the server wall, all with just Ace. It's like actually crazy what we can do with him. Uh, so he's definitely in the insane tier. I, and with the AK, like that's crazy. Uh, Malusi also going to go in the insane tier. Her gadget is so ridiculously overpowered. Like the, the fact that she has her gun, she has Ellis pistol with that optic, the C4. Uh, it's just honestly ridiculous. And lastly, Zero. 100% in the insane tier his new weapon that was added to the game is like as good as the AK so I believe that that alone makes him like crazy good he's also got the mp7 with the 1.5x on attack 
um which is really good and as i said earlier he basically does what twitch does but like more efficiently so if you think about it he has like five drones he has his three gadgets with like twitch drone shocks basically and then also his two normal drones and then grenades so like honestly i feel like zero is one of the best operators right now for like gaining intel and uh things such as that but that's going to end the list uh if you guys agree or disagree be sure to let me know in the comments and i hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching